Extreme Heat, Romance on the Go. Written by Jewel Quinlan. Narrated by P.J. Oakland. Chapter 1 the board cut like a blade through the translucent water of the Bay of Dakla. Kai Shepard pulled on the bar of his rig, forcing the small crescent of orange kite overhead into the power zone of the wind. As it harnessed the full strength of the thirty-knot gust, he cut faster through the water and felt the adrenaline rush he always did during a good ride. The increased speed carried him with perfect timing to the swell he'd targeted ahead, and within seconds, he became one with the surging wave. A yank of his gear gave him lift, and Kai launched off its crest in a huge jump, over five meters into the air. As he rose, he spun two 360s, and then, contracting his core, he pulled the board over his head at the jump's climax in an invert. On the way down, he quickly grabbed the board and pulled his feet out to score or extra points with a board off. Kai returned it to his feet, and drifted down to give a rock-solid landing in the water. Satisfaction coursed through him. It had been a risk to pull that one off. He'd only ever completed that combination successfully a few times before. The crowd on the beach roared, and several air horns sounded as he glided on the emerald blue-green swell toward land, a huge smile on his face, easily his best go of the season. The roar of the waves and wind muffled the sound of the commentators over the speakers, but Kai gathered from their tone that he'd won Morocco's freestyle kiteboarding competition. He slid to a stop on the sand and released the bar of his rig, letting his kite drop from the sky into the hands of a crew member. Reporters and photographers ran forward from the crowd of bodies on the beach to encircle him. Microphones invaded his personal space, and the rapid click of the photographer's cameras sounded like cicadas in December. How does it feel to be the champion of the pro kiteboarding tour? A male reporter shouted at him. Is that official? He asked. You beat Luke McRae's score by a mile with that last move, a female reporter answered. The news brought a grin to Kai's face. He and Luke had been fighting it out for the whole circuit. Although he respected Luke and was glad for the competition, it also felt fucking awesome to kick his ass. Raising his arms in the air, Kai gave a whoop of victory, and the crowd echoed it back in a roar. He drew a deep breath to give another victory shout, but the glimpse of a familiar blonde head further back in the throng caused the instant deflation of his lungs as memories flooded his mind. Chloe Gage? Her hair was pulled back in a ponytail, and she had a camera pressed to her face as she took pictures of him but in the brief moment she'd lowered it, he knew it was Chloe. Her features had been chiseled into his mind five years ago. From what little he could see, she had grown taller, leaner, hotter. Kai would recognize her anywhere, with or without the changes, and even squinting in the sun as he was now. His line of sight cut off. Kai got distracted as the crowd pressed in to clasp his hand or hug him in congratulations. The reporters became even more aggressive with their questions as well, causing Kai to lose track of Chloe in the multitude. He saw me. Chloe's gut twisted as she remembered the moment their eyes met, and the second recognition had registered in his expression, which washed into something different along with it. But into what it had transitioned, she didn't quite know. She expected him to be cool, or aloof even, but could deduce nothing from what she'd seen. She opened the door to her hotel room and set her camera and tote on the dresser. In the mirror on the wall above it, she caught the look of preoccupation on her face. At first, it annoyed her. She was here to work, not act like some lovesick groupie. Well, who wouldn't be preoccupied by Kai? The truth of the thought soothed her. She fidgeted with her belongings on the dresser as she filtered through her newest memories of him. He'd grown into one hell of a mature athlete, that much was certain. His muscular arms and ripped abs, covered with tanned skin, flashed through her mind, as did his jaw, now shadowed with stubble. Very different from the 16-year-old Kai she'd known in high school, back in Victoria, Australia. His parents had moved there in the middle of the year, and he'd been a sophomore while she was a senior. She would never forget the night he'd kissed her. The way his feverish teenage lips 
had sparked a passion deep inside her. That same feeling had writhed again, awakened, when their eyes connected on the beach, sending an inexplicable heat seeping through her. She'd been transported back to their teenage years. Chloe stroked her fingers over her lips as she remembered. Although they'd lived in the same neighborhood and went to the same school that year, they'd never really hung out until the night one of the kids in their neighborhood snagged a case of beer. Word had spread, and a group had congregated in the nearby brush of the outback to drink it. As the group had become intoxicated, several of them drifted away in pairs into the darkness to do what all teenagers do, and then it had been Chloe and Kai and a couple of other guys left sitting in their small circle. The guys soon left, laughing and stumbling, to take a leak in the bushes, and Kai had moved closer to sit next to Chloe. He was tall and lean, and looked older than he really was. There was something about the depth of his eyes that made him seem more mature than others his age. She supposed some would say it was because he had an old soul, but it was sexier than that. I don't think we've really met, he said, but I've seen you at school. I've seen you too. I remember when you moved here mid-year. All the girls of Pakenham Secondary College had noticed him, seniors included. They agreed he was hot, but bemoaned his age, a couple of years younger and only in the sophomore class. They'd envied the younger girls their luck. Yeah. That's right. The dim light of the nearly full moon revealed even white teeth and a friendly expression. He scooted closer. A few strands of his dark hair curved over his forehead, and the color of his eyes reminded her of the warm glow of the coffee beans her mother grinded every morning. He adjusted his legs on the ground, and his firm thigh bumped gently against hers, making her shiver with nervousness. He wore dark green cargo pants, and black boots that suited the hard lines of his legs. Are you cold? he asked, putting his hand on her back. You can share my jacket. Before she could say anything, Kai brought his side against hers, tucked the flap of material over her, and rested his arm across to hold it in place. His fingers moved up and down her shoulder in a warming way. At first, Chloe stiffened with the contact, but then she relaxed, and snuggled closer to him. Nobody was around. When would she ever have the opportunity again to snuggle with a hot guy like him? Might as well, before the others came back. It felt nice to be there against the heat of his hard chest and side. Their faces were centimeters apart, and his lightly beer-laced breath wafted across her cheek. So, how come we've never talked before? He asked. She felt a pull from his eyes as he looked at her, one she'd felt before when their eyes had made contact at school. Her immature female senses began sending messages that she still didn't quite know how to interpret. Beneath her skin, she could feel a million chemical reactions spinning, alternating between heated tensions and sinuous, tingly laxness as her body prepared for something. I don't know. I guess it's because we're in different classes. Well, I'm glad we're here now. I've been wanting to get to know the prettiest girl in school. Her lips parted in a surprised smile. Prettiest? Latest bloomer was more like it. Her legs had always been long and gangly, and she was forever trying to coax the straight strands of her hair into curls. Chloe had an urge to giggle, but suppressed it. Thanks, but you have to be the only one to think so. She'd certainly never gotten that impression from the other guys at school. But that was different, she supposed. They'd all known each other since they were in nappies. Kai was the new kid, an outsider seeing things with fresh eyes. Could what he was saying be true? Chloe wondered if he knew he was the hottest guy in school. A large part of her was eager to flirt with him, but another part kept screaming that he was too young. She was two years older than he. What would her friends think if they snogged? Oh, but how she wanted to. His lips, although not full, seemed to promise they would wipe her thoughts clean on contact. No, it has nothing to do with what I think. It's a fact, he said. She felt a heat rush into her cheeks, and she couldn't look away from him, mesmerized by the tone of his voice and the sincerity of his words. She wanted to trail her fingers across the strong plane of his jaw and into the glossy strands of his hair. It must have shown in her eyes, because his expression became intense 
and he leaned in, pulling her closer, his lips capturing hers in a deep, penetrating kiss. The shift threw Chloe off balance, and her hand landed on his thigh as she sought to support herself when his lips assaulted hers, plundering and coaxing at the same time. The feeling of cloth over hard male muscle added to her excitement, making her blood boil, and she curled her fingers into the material of his pants. His firm lips played against hers in a sinuous dance, and her eyes drifted closed, shutting out the physical world, making their shared pleasure that much more palpable. Maybe just a short kiss would be all right. Kai held his hand against the side of her face and tasted her. When his tongue probed gently against her lips, Chloe parted them, eager yet apprehensive. The kiss went on several moments longer than she had intended, but she made no move to stop it. It was much too good. Her first real kiss. The real surprise was the drive within urging her forward, making her long for more. She'd thought that when she finally got kissed, she would be able to keep a clear head, keep things under control. But the feel of their tongues sliding and twining together, the hot mix of steam from their breaths, caused delicious feelings to awaken deep inside her, ones that had been hinted at in naughty dreams, but none that she'd ever felt while awake. When Kai poked the tip of his finger into her mouth along with his tongue, she was surprised, but then, as she explored both with her tongue, she found the sensations to be exceptional. The chemistry between them continued to build, both beginning to pant with desire. And then, after several minutes, he leaned her back onto the ground and covered her body with his, one of his hard thighs coming to rest between her legs. Kai's warm weight felt glorious, the pressure of him against her chest and belly igniting a fire to burn low within her. His lips trailed a path of ecstasy over her cheek to her neck and then up to her ear, unleashing a cascade of emotions. One of his hands lifted the edge of her shirt and his fingers probed the soft flesh of her waist and then her rib cage, causing a small moan to escape her. She barely knew him, but still, Chloe didn't stop him. His take-charge manner was turning her on in ways she'd never experienced before. Do you like that? Kai asked, his voice low and gruff. Yes, she whispered. Good, because I've been wanting to touch you for a while. He lowered his lips to hers again, only to be interrupted by the sound of the others returning, crunching back through the brush. Their voices seemed loud, even startling and it snapped them out of the cozy warmth they were enveloped in all too soon. She was just beginning to explore the pull she'd felt toward him since he'd come to the school, and barely started to understand what was behind it. But as the noises drew closer, both of them sat up and scooted to their original spots. Nothing more happened after that. Although Kai had tried to talk to her in school a few times, it had been awkward, as expected, in the light of day at school, among hundreds of other students, the earnest look in his eyes had crushed her as she'd clumsily blown him off while her friends stood a couple yards away, watching. How could they possibly date? How would he fit in with her senior friends? Would they accept him into their circle? He was so young. No way it could work. But the memory of that night had been with her ever since. She'd relived the kiss in her fantasies many times, her imagination going even further than they had that night, sending her into feverish dreams from which she would continually wake, unsatisfied. There hadn't been any other opportunities for them to be thrown together after that night, but they would see each other at school, and the contact and pull when their eyes met was so much stronger than before. She wished she could grab his hand and pull him away somewhere to talk, to tell him how she felt, but the restraints of social hierarchy kept her paralyzed, helpless to do anything. School had ended soon after, and she'd left to spend the summer at her aunt's place in Sydney, returning only briefly to pack for uni. How could such a short-lived memory still affect her after five years? Had he experienced something similar as well? Probably not. He was a pro athlete and had been surrounded by girls in bikinis as she'd walked away from the beach after the awards ceremony. 
girls with better tans and bigger breasts than she had. Oh well. The past was the past, and awkward teenage memories were best left there. She came here to Morocco to do a job. She'd only been bumped up to this assignment because the regular photographer had broken his leg. But it was a good chance to prove herself to Kite Rush magazine, and it was time to get over to the celebration party at the resort's bar. Sponsored by Jose Cuervo, it would be a great place to get more pictures. Chapter 2 The bar was packed. The DJ spun live next to the dance floor, and there were people already moving to the beat in the warm evening air. Chloe chided herself for coming late to the party. She'd opened and closed the door to her apartment several times during the last hour, trying to get up the courage to go, but it had problems gathering it, despite the logic her brain continued to formulate. What would he care that she was there? She was just an old school chum, nothing more. But nothing had worked. She'd tried several times to turn the knob of her door with no success, almost as if anticipation held her back. When it approached a time when she knew there would be a crowd, she'd finally been able to leave. It was the tactic of a coward, but she'd come to terms with her need to hide. A strange nervous feeling rattled around in her stomach that Chloe didn't know how to get rid of. What would his reaction be when they were finally face to face? Come on, Chloe, it's time to grow a backbone. That was ages ago. She tucked a strand of blonde hair behind her ear, glad now that she'd packed the white sundress and matching wedges. A good outfit was always a confidence booster. Jesus, the place was small. The party, on the terrace of the resort's restaurant, overlooked the beach. It had endless views of the pristine ocean with its fading streaks of blood-orange sun. A buffet was set up down the middle, with two bars on opposite sides. There had to be three hundred people there. Maybe it wasn't that small after all. It was just her anxiety making her feel claustrophobic. If only she weren't alone, she wouldn't feel this way. Normally, one of the journalists would have accompanied her, but they were torn between assignments and it fell to Chloe to take notes on the event so the staff could write it up. She toyed with the camera in her hand, reminded herself why she was there, and sucked in a fortifying breath. Hello, beautiful. What's your name? Asked a male voice, tinged with a flinty South African accent. She looked up to find a brown-haired man with laughing eyes standing next to her. He had some white hairs coming in amid the brown, and his skin had a weathered look to it. It was Luke McRae, last year's champion and Kai's main competitor. She extended her hand to him. Chloe Geich, I'm a photographer with Cartrush magazine. He smiled. Really? If they keep sending photographers like you to our events, I think I'm going to become a bigger fan of theirs. She laughed, flattered, her nerves easing with the interaction. Thank you. That's very nice. Just telling the truth. He gave her a wink. Would you mind if I took a picture of you? Sure. But then, you have to let me buy you a drink. She really should be taking pictures of Kai. He'd won the event, after all, and it was only a matter of time before she had to get close to him. It had been much easier before, taking shots from a distance. But maybe spending a few minutes with Luke would put her more at ease. She wavered for a moment not wanting to send the wrong message. Flirting with cute athletes wasn't really what she was here to do. But one drink was harmless. And if it helped her get to know people so she could get better pictures, why not? Kite Rush would be very happy with behind-the-scenes information about the second-place winner anyway. Tio, she said. Kai's eyes narrowed as he watched Chloe take a picture of his competitor. Luke had thrown his arms around two girls for the shot, and then led Chloe to the bar, where they exchanged smiles as he'd bought her a drink. Kai's blood heated in his veins as he watched Luke touch her arm, his fingers sliding up and down her skin in a small rubbing motion. He had a perfect view of them from where he sat at a crowded table with a group of friends. Chloe was wearing a white sundress that clung to her breasts with perfection. Thin straps ran over her shoulders and crisscrossed down her back. Her long legs were slim, with the right amount of lean muscle that tapered to trim ankles. Luke toyed with a strand of Chloe's long blonde hair, and Kai gripped his beer. Kai, you all right? asked Casey, 
sitting next to him. They were both twenty-one, but Casey's wide blue eyes and the freckles across the bridge of his nose made him seem younger. He was an American kiteboarder, but they'd met because they both lived in Perth and practiced at the same beaches. They had become good friends over time, and Casey was now like a brother to him. Even though they often competed against each other, a healthy camaraderie existed between them. Yeah, I'm fine. You remember that girl I told you about a while back? He said in a low voice, leaning in so the others couldn't hear. He normally stayed pretty open about things, but Casey was the only one he'd ever told about Chloe. Kai had never been able to get her out of his mind. Over the last several years, he often wondered how she was doing at uni, and where she'd ended up after graduation. The one from high school? Kai nodded. What about her? She's over there. Kai pointed, and Casey's hazel eyes moved in the direction. The one wearing the white dress. Casey gave a low whistle. I thought you were exaggerating before. Now I know you weren't. What's she doing with Luke McRae? Looks to me like he's hitting on her. Casey looked back at him, eyes scanning his face. And? You gonna do something about that? He'd been watching for several minutes, but it hadn't struck him until Casey asked the question that he should do something. There she was, right in front of him. He'd let her slip away before, and he couldn't let her slip away again. At least, not without some answers this time. Older, and a tough competitor now, how could he let anyone or anything stand in the way of his reunion with her? He locked gazes with Casey. You're damn right I am. Chapter 3 Even though the air was pleasant and warm, Chloe suddenly felt hot. That's when she knew Kai was near. She felt her face freeze mid-smile as she spoke to Luke. Hi, Chloe, Kai said, close to her ear. She turned her head to find him standing right next to her. A black leather cord with a shark tooth hung from his neck, and he wore a light blue, fitted t-shirt that hugged the planes of lean muscle beneath. He kept his hair short now, the jagged ebony strands arranged into a faux hawk, giving him a stylish edge. His glistening brown eyes looked into hers, taking her back in time. The pull between them still existed. Her breath caught. Before she could regain her composure, he smiled and hugged her. Chloe embraced him back, aware of the eyes on them. The muscles of his waist felt firm beneath her hands, and the light, scratchy feel of the stubble on his jaw tickled her cheek, causing the stirring of molten heat within her. His warm scent was that of soap, aftershave, and summer wind. Kai pulled her closer with his strong arms, and the contact of their bodies made the heat within her flare. She would have loved to rest there in his arms forever, but her sense of propriety made her stiffen. They were surrounded by people, and she was here working. She had to keep things professional. It's great to see you again, he breathed in her ear before letting her go. The low vibration of his voice seemed to shoot through her ear and straight down her spine, tingling as it went. She eased back from him and tried to regain her wits. What was it that made her so flustered? We are just old friends from school. You guys know each other? Luke asked. His sharp eyes darted between them. Um, yes, Chloe said. We went to the same secondary college. Kai was a sophomore the same year I was a senior. She wasn't sure why she said it. It would have been enough to say they went to the same school. He certainly didn't look younger anymore. One of Kai's eyebrows furrowed at her words and then smoothed out again. What brings you here to the competition, Chloe? I'm covering for one of my co-workers. He usually works these type of events, but he broke his leg. I'm a photographer for Kite Rush magazine. Yeah, and she's been taking pictures of the most handsome guy here. Luke said with a cheeky grin. He wrapped an arm around Chloe's shoulders in a hug. She squirmed out of it as soon as possible. Luke had been getting more and more friendly as she'd chatted with him, but even though his attentions were making her uncomfortable, she couldn't help but feel pleased at the way Kai's eyes lit with a hint of something dangerous, and the way he tracked the movement of Luke's arm away from her shoulders with his eyes. Really? I didn't notice you snapping pictures of me. I would have smiled more if I'd known. 
Kai joked. He slapped Luke's shoulder, and they both laughed. But Chloe could hear the subtle tone of challenge and noted the change in their stances. So, you're a photographer now? Kai asked. Yes, I love it. It brings me to fun places like this. What about you? She asked him. Both of the men's eyes widened in disbelief. Kite boarding? Kai said in a questioning voice. In case you hadn't noticed, we're both pros, Luke said. She felt like kicking herself. Kai's presence ran interference with her brainwaves. Had she insulted them? Sorry, I didn't know it was something you could make a living off of. This is the first time I've even seen it live. How is it you work for a cardboarding magazine and have just seen it? Luke asked. She blushed. I'm still new at them. Before this, I was working for a wedding magazine. That explains it, then. It's okay. You're not the only one, Luke said. It's still a relatively new sport. We do pretty well with it, though. Kai nodded in agreement, but looked at her with a puzzled expression. It's a great job. We get to be on the water all the time and travel to exotic locations like this for competitions. It sounds like a dream, she said. I think I would get homesick after a while, though. Do you guys ever feel that way? She herself liked the comfortable routine of home and being surrounded by her belongings. Hotels must take some getting used to. Nah, Luke said. Not at all, Kai agreed. It feels more like the world is my home, and I keep getting to see new parts of it. I've been able to have experiences people only dream about. That's worth a lot more to me than a house full of stuff. I still remember the time we went to a competition in Ecuador and went zip lining in the jungle. We saw monkeys in the trees that time. And later I got pictures of us straddling the equator. That's just a couple of examples. Each competition takes us somewhere new. Not only do I love my work, I also have the benefit of getting to see the world. At this point, I've seen more of it than others will in their entire lifetime. Yeah, you won't catch any of us feeling homesick. We're too busy enjoying our lives. Chloe could feel his passion for his work, his life. It made her want to be more free-spirited herself. She'd always been so conservative at heart. Well said, brother, Luke commented. He held his knuckles out to Kai, and Kai fist-bumped him. So, Chloe, why don't we grab a table and get something to eat? Um, you know what, Luke? I think it's time for me to get some pictures of Kai, she said. I would love a few with both of you together, too, if you don't mind, she said, turning back to Kai. It made her glad that he was being friendly with her and that he'd let the past go. He shrugged. Not at all. She snapped two of them together and would have gotten a couple more, but Kai grabbed her hand and said, I hope you don't mind, Luke, but Chloe and I have a lot to catch up on. We haven't seen each other in five years. Disappointment crossed over Luke's face, but his tone remained light and nonchalant. No problem. Just come back and finish your drink with me, Chloe. When you're done playing with young one here. Chloe laughed with him. Kai chuckled good-naturedly, but Chloe could see the darkening in his expression. Sorry, mate. You won't be getting a back. We're going to be a while. And with those words, he pulled Chloe away, effectively cock-blocking Luke. She followed in his wake, feeling helpless. She didn't want to pull away and make a scene. Crap. Looks like he hasn't let go of the past. Embarrassment began to well within her. How could she ever explain why she'd behaved the way she did? Or admit that she'd been a coward? What guy could ever understand the workings of a teenage girl's mind? But it looked like they were going to have that intimate chat she'd been trying to avoid, after all. Hi readers, I'm Jewel Quinlan and I just wanted to pop on really quick and say thank you so much for visiting my channel and checking out the first three chapters of this book. I wish I could have given you the entire book. Unfortunately, um, romance gets a little spicy as you know and I didn't want to violate the, the terms of the channel by posting the entire book. So um, the rest of the book, if you want to check it out, the link is in the notes so you can find all the places that you can either buy or rent it. Um, it's at retailers, it's in some libraries as well, and I appreciate you. Thanks for visiting.